for this fourth and final lecture of chapter six, uh, we're going to throw the last three phases together and go through them really quickly because we will address all of these phases again when we get into how the immune system is activated and then what happens during and after activation. So just looking at it in the context of B cell development and maturation, um, we're going to see a B cell that has gone through rearrangement of the heavy chain, gone through rearrangement of the light chain. They work. Checkpoint, checkpoints passed. They went through negative selection to remove any self-reactive B cells. They went through positive selection to get survival signals from the follicular dendritic cells. At this point, we have a mature, naive B cell that has not been activated or seen its antigen yet. And it's going to be searching for infection. Eventually, that B cell will maybe come into contact with its antigen, and so then it will find infection, and then it will go through a variety of changes and expansions and um, uh, proliferation of actually making effector proteins to attack the infection. And so um, we're going to be looking at the lymphoid, secondary lymphoid tissues here, as well as circulation. It's gonna be going back and forth between circulation and then into the secondary lymphoid tissue. Most, oops, mostly though, this um, these B cells will hang out a lot in the secondary lymphoid tissue because that's where a uh, specific antigen is really gonna be mostly encountered. When that mature, naive B cell does encounter specific antigen, they are going to be retained in the secondary lymphoid tissue. And specifically, they're going to be retained in what's called the T cell area. It's a little bit further towards the center of the lymph node, if we're looking at a lymph node. Um, uh, and this is where T cells are going to be located so that B cells can now interact with T cells because we've talked about or hinted at the fact that T cells need to tell every other cell what to do. And that's no different than with B cells. And so once a B cell is activated, it will internalize that antigen. It will process that antigen. It will present that antigen to T cells in the T cell area. And then when a T cell connects with the B cell, um, the T cell will tell the B cell proliferate differentiate, become a plasma cell and make those proteins. Uh, when that happens, then the plasma cell will stop producing MHC class two molecule and surface immunoglobulin and just produce secreted antibody. Plasma cell will then eventually move to the bone marrow and um, produce antibody that's secreted from the bone marrow. So when we have a T cell interacting with the B cell, we call that a cognate pair. So cognate pairs, we can also call them, I like to call them soulmates <laughs> because they're both going to recognize the same antigen. The T cell receptor and the B cell receptors have the same antigen specificity. And so they're practically soulmates. And that B cell is going to internalize the antigen all the specificities might be different. Let's keep that clear. The, the B cell will recognize an antigen, process that antigen after it's internalized it, and then it will display processed antigen, which might look very different than what it looked like the way the B cell recognized it. Regardless, it displays this antigen processed in conjunction with MHC class two, a T cell will bind it, CD40 binds CD40 ligand, and then we end up with what's called a germinal center. So the primary follicle is where the B cell will migrate to. It will turn into a secondary follicle, which will then create a germinal center where um, B cells will proliferate and end up becoming lymphoblasts and then um, those lymphoblasts will make a whole bunch of B cells with the same specificity, and then they can make really great antibody because it can be isotype switched, it can be uh, highly specific, and, um, and those B cells that make the best antibody are going to be selected for further differentiation into plasma cells. So cells that survive the process of affinity maturation. Uh, we talked about affinity maturation back in chapter four, where when a B cell 
is activated by a T cell and makes a clone of B cells with slightly different antigen specificities. Some of those antigen specificities are going to be stronger than others. Only those that have the strongest antigen specificity will go on to make, or the highest affinity will go on to make plasma cells that secrete antibody of that, that isotyped high affinity uh, form. That's affinity maturation. Um, <clears throat> so yes, so these plasma cells secrete high affinity isotype switch antibody. And then um, this is what the B cell arm of the primary immune response does. This is called humoral immunity or the um, soluble immunity or however you want to, the antibody end of it. Now, as the primary immune response starts to shut down and antigen has been cleared and the infection has been, you know, really kind of cleared up, B cells are also going to differentiate into another subset of cells called B memory cells or memory B cells. Memory B cells have the um, directions to create high affinity isotype switched antibody upon reactivation. Um, that means memory cells don't have to go through development of making a new heavy chain, making a new light chain. They don't have to go through positive selection or negative selection. They don't have to then be activated by a T cell to go on and switch. And so you're cutting down so much time. And so these memory cells are long lived and they can be called up and reactivated so much more rapidly to make antibody that is high affinity, isotype switched and do the work that it needs to be done and wipe out an infection if it ever sees it again and it doesn't, you don't even notice that you have it. So we kind of looked at two different types of um, infections, right? We had this primary infection where um, prior, actually prior to the primary infection, we had the development of an immature B cell. Then we had the primary infection where we ended up making a memory cell. And then we can have a secondary infection where that memory cell gets called up um, to reactivate. But this slide just kind of shows everything that we talked about uh, in this whole chapter. We'll look at phases four, five, and six in more depth in later chapters when we look at how the immune system actually functions. But just looking at how a B cell is developed and how it matures and where it goes and what it looks like, this slide kind of encompasses it all. So we have in the bone marrow, the rearrangement of the heavy chain. We have the rearrangement of the light chain. We have the testing to make sure that the B cell receptor doesn't recognize self. Then that B cell is immature, can leave the bone marrow, go get tested in the periphery to see if any self antigen recognition occurs. That was all negative selection. Then we move into where they are tested for getting that positive selection where they can interact with a follicular dendritic cell. That means that it is a mature B cell, naive. It gets activated by antigen, interacts with the T cell, goes through affinity maturation, ends up making antibody, um, fights the infection, and then becomes a memory cell. So we will visit this again, but this is a really nice summary table to have. Okay, to wrap things up then, and my last slide, I believe, is at any stage along the way, along the development of a B cell, there's the potential for that B cell to lose control of the cell cycle. So keep in mind that we're looking at um, B cell development, but at the same time, we have our normal cell processes occurring where a B cell can lose control over its cell cycle and start to do, uh, replicate out of control. And that's what we call cancer. And so at any time, at any step along the process, a B cell can become a cancerous cell, become a tumor cell, and then we call these different types of cancers. So if we have a progenitor cell that has not 
yet become a B cell, we can end up with a lymphoblastic leukemia. Okay, it can be acute, it can be chronic, depending on um, what type um, we're looking at. If we have a pre-B cell, it can be called a pre-B cell leukemia. If it is a, um, what are some other ones that we see quite often? Um, oh, if it's a germinal B cell where it has um, gotten into the secondary lymphoid tissue, it could be Hodgkin's lymphoma, and so the tumor is going to be developing in the secondary lymphoid tissue. If we have a plasma cell, all of a sudden start um, becoming a tumor and producing tons and tons of antibody, we end up with multiple myeloma. Um, if it's secreting IgM, it could be Waldenstrom's macro, macroglobulinemia. Globulinemia. So at any different stage, um, it just shows the different types of um, cancers that can come about. So just so you know that um, it's all about B-cell development and the different stages they're at. Okay. That's where I want to end. Um, we, yeah, I hope that that was okay. It's kind of a lot. The summary slides though are really good to go back to uh, if you need to kind of just brush up on, on some things.